Good morning, Vivian. What a lovely morning it is. That's a matter of opinion. Uh, look at the pair of you. It's like Dawn of the Dead in here. Ah, oh, thanks a bunch. Hen party. Oh. We started off with champagne in the limo, drinks in the bar, cocktails in the club, and somewhere in between I have this vague memory of tequila slammers. Don't tell me you went too. You don't strike me as a veil and L-plates kind of lady. If that's an attempt at humour, I wouldn't waste your breath. Some of the staff were invited to Julia's last night for a dinner party. Sounds interesting. You could say that. Anyway, the kettle's on. You can tell me all about your therapy. Quite a night, eh? <laughs> you didn't have any toast. I made marmalade. I'll have some later now. Oh, food's important, love. We need to keep that brain ticking over so you can pass as many GCSEs as you can. Think how proud your granddad would have been. I'll do my best. I know you will. Now, have you taken your vitamins? Matthew, vitamins! You know how many germs there are flying around this time of year? Doing it now. I know it's only a slight movement, but it's really positive. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, we went to carry these last night. <laughs> Don't stop it. <laughs> Nick's got some movement back in one of his toes, isn't that great? Oh, that's, that's great news. What's up? Has someone died? Uh, no, nothing. Um, I've just got a bit of news to tell you myself. Um, me and Eva are expecting a baby. Jimmy! That's amazing! Look, I, I didn't get the chance to congratulate you properly last night. Sure. Well done, mate. You'll be a brilliant dad. <laughs> well, uh, I better get on. Yeah, mate. Was it something I said? Hiya. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's better. Why aren't you wearing your uniform? Don't you like it? Yeah, but... Then come in and show me. Still not fessed up to you, Nana. I will when I'm ready. So what's with the clothes? Well, I've got that doctor's appointment. I can't bunk off school, Deb. You're too square for your own good. You'd come if you loved me. I do love you, babe. All right, then. Brilliant. And we've got time to hit the shops first. How come? Well, the appointment isn't until lunchtime. Well, come on, might even find some decent gear for you. Something your nana didn't pick. <laughs> anyway, I'm really pleased about the baby. You two must be over the moon. Yeah, we are. Well, it, it's taken a little bit of getting used to. Yeah. Mind you, Eva didn't seem too happy about us all finding out. Well, we hadn't exactly planned on telling anyone yet. Oh, I see. Well, maybe I can make it up to her somehow, you know, prove to her that we're not all as bad as we may have seen last night. <laughs> you could always arrange another staff get-together. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> no, no. Never, ever again. I mean it. So, how are you today, Deborah? It's Debbie. I'm fine, thanks. Mm, lucky you. I've got the hangover from hell. Not that I'm advocating binge drinking to people of your age, or any age, of course. And who's this? Matt, my boyfriend. I want to go on the pill. I see. We really love each other. Well, I'm very impressed that you've come as a couple. It shows a lot of maturity. But I will need to go through all the different contraceptive options with you, Debbie. Um, the pill's very popular, but it doesn't suit everyone. I don't want to end up some sad pram pusher. Well, you're being very responsible, but... Having sex is a big deal. I know, we've been doing it for ages. And we've decided we want something more reliable than condoms. Don't we, Matt? I'm sure you both know how important safe sex is. Once you start taking the pill, provided that you follow the instructions, 
You will be covered against pregnancy, but not against sexually transmitted infections, so you'll need to carry on using condoms, OK? Yeah, of course. And you need to start taking this on the first day of your next period, and I'd like you to make an appointment for three months' time just so I can check everything's OK. Thanks, Dr Bell. Any worries or questions? Mm, no, don't think so. Matt? No, thank you. Great. Well, I'll see you in three months' time, Debbie. Hi, yeah, it's Matt. I'll call you back if you leave me a message. Oh, hello. This is S.L. Kingsley, Matthew Kingsley's grandmother. I need to speak to him urgently. C could you ask him to ring me before his lunch break finishes? I'm sorry. I don't understand. I'd better go. What's the point? We've missed most of the day anyway. Oh, I thought we could go back to mine. I'll make things on toast and we can do a bit of course work. You are bad news. This is you that's given up smoking, but I still want to get a cholesterol down. I'm keeping you up. Uh, sorry. That's the last time I go out on a hen party and I've got work the next day. I just can't bounce back the way I used to. Coffee and fresh air, that's what you need. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I should be out and about like George, not stuck in here all day. Come to think of it, George's only just come back from being off sick. And she wasn't herself last week. Come in! Michelle, you're never gonna... Guess... Well, I won't unless you tell me. Well, I... Well, there's more gossip from last night. I'm starting to wish I'd been there. <laughs> I mean, then you... Just a... Baby! Yeah. How about Jimmy's baby? It's going to be a daddy. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah, he told us this morning. Well, that's great. Carry on. Yeah. I'd like to review um, Mr Marshall's diet and exercise programme. I'll, um, I'll come back later. I'm sorry, I need to see Dr Fenton urgently. If you wouldn't mind waiting your turn, madam. I have a number of patients who were here before you. I don't care, I need to see Dr Fenton now. And I don't care for your tone. I suggest you calm down and I'll deal with you in a moment. But this is an emergency. Oh, Dr Fenton, thank goodness. Estelle, what is it? Something terrible's happened. Come through and let's sort it out. So, what do you want to start with? History? I was thinking more like biology. Deb. <laughs> Matt, you didn't really think I wanted to work, did you? You did. Oh, bless you. You're like the sweetest boy that ever lived. Come here, Divi, and let me show you how much I love you. How can Matthew be thinking about having sex? He's just a child. Young people grow up very quickly these days. You must have realised it would become an issue sooner or later. He's only 14. He didn't even tell me he had a girlfriend. Well, parents and guardians are often the last people to know. You must talk to him. I know. It's just I wasn't prepared for all this happening so soon. But that's not really the issue, is it? We should stop. Why? Cos, you haven't started taking your pills yet, and I haven't got any condoms on me. Have you? We used them all up, remember? So what? So, you don't want to end up some sad pram pusher? That's not going to happen the one time we don't use anything. We'll be fine. You don't know that. I know everything, me. Oh, leave it! Shh, stand up. Hi, Nan. Hi, love. How are you? Fine. Is everything OK? Yes. Well, no, actually. I need to speak to you about something very important, Matthew. Matt. What's wrong, Nan? Not over the phone. I need to see you right away. Can you come home, love? Uh, yeah, OK. I'll be there as soon as I can. I think we've been sussed. 
How come? She called me Matt. She never calls me Matt. So, what's the goss? Is it you and Archie? <laughs> no, although I did nearly break my ankle because I wore these heels just to prove a point, but then he got jealous of me talking to Daniel, even though Vivian's horrible friend was flirting with him, but then he held my hair out of the way after I threw up and we had sex in Julia's spare room. Oh, too much information. Anyway, that's not it, Michelle. You're not going to believe this. Go on, try me. Ronnie has left George and he's taken Bracken. What? But I don't understand why you can't tell me... <gasps> You think it's got something to do with Nick? Nan? What's Dr Fenton doing here? It's a family matter. Who's this? I'm his girlfriend. Well, I'm afraid you'll have to leave, young lady. Her name's Debbie. We have something we need to discuss, Matthew. You can have your friend round another time. Actually, I think Debbie should stay. But, but this I... may well concern her too. Is this to do with me seeing Dr Bell this morning? I thought that was all confidential. She's got no right to tell you. Deb. Loads of girls go on the pill at my age. This is worse than I thought. Debbie, Matt, I think you should sit down. And I would like to assure you that Dr Bell hasn't broken patient confidentiality. Oh. Then what is it, Nan? <sighs> You're not ill, are you? No, love, I'm fine. It... I can't talk about this in front of her. I am here, you know. And what did you mean, this concerns me too? I'm sorry, love. I'm so sorry. Nan, you're scaring me. What is it? I know this is very personal, but have you two had sex? Yeah. What's it got to do with you? I need to establish if you've had sex without a condom or any accidents a condom splitting, for example. Are you getting some kind of pervy kick from all this? I'm very sorry, but I have to ask this. Deb, it's OK. There haven't been any accidents. Good. OK. You can leave now, Debbie. <laughs> Just like that. A few questions about my sex life, then out the door. I want Debbie to stay, Nan. And I want someone to tell me what's wrong. It's done. Would you like me to tell him? Nan, please, what's wrong? Is there something wrong with me? Matt, there's no easy way to say this. I can't be ill. I hardly ever go to the doctors. What, am I supposed to have cancer or something? No, it isn't cancer. Then what? Nan! There, there is no easy way to say this. But, Matt, I'm afraid that you have the HIV virus. You are HIV positive. Tell me this is a sick joke. Tell me! I'm so sorry, Matt. Yeah, but that's a massive turn up for the books, isn't it? I mean, you've only been together five minutes. <laughs> Tell me about it. Well, all we have to hope is that the baby gets his mother's good looks. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> hey, I thought we could go to the Icon as we've both got something to celebrate. Don't leave my account. No appetite. See you later, Jim. Will you please tell me why it gets colder than the Arctic every time I come into a room? It's George. Last night she told us that Ronnie'd left her. What have you done, mate? I never meant for this to happen. I swear to you, it's just... A moment of weakness. I can't believe it. Don't. Yeah, what? Well, still takes two to tango. Well, thanks for that, but I don't think that's going to stop me being the most hated man at the mill, will it? Yeah, well, if I was you, I'd keep your head down for a while. All I ever wanted to do was protect you. Protect me? by treating me like a little kid. I am so sorry. Please try to understand how hard it was for me. For you? I'm going to die and you're telling me this is hard for you? I know this is a dreadful shock, Matt, but please understand that Estelle thought she was doing the right thing by trying to hide your illness. Yeah, well, that's easy for you to say, but you're not the one who's going to die. You'll find this hard to accept, but you are, in fact, a very lucky young man. You are what they call a long-term non-progressor. 
which means that your own immune system is controlling the virus so there are no symptoms and you don't need any medication. It's very, very unusual. Yes, you are HIV positive, but you're about as healthy as anyone with the virus could possibly be. And many patients with the virus who've had it for decades still lead very active lives, and there's no reason to think that you should do any different. I can't get my head around this. Why didn't you tell me? Help me, please! We're closed. Please, you've got to let me in. I need to see Dr Bell. It's out of the question. You'll have to come back at four o'clock. You can make an appointment then. It's the last thing we want, Bill, your parents, if you break that. She's insisting on seeing Dr Bell. She'll see you during afternoon surgery, OK? I'm so sorry, Dr Bell. Debbie, what's the matter? <laughs> please, help me, please. I've got AIDS. How long have I had it now? How did I get it? How long? You have had the virus since birth. An infected blood transfusion. Your granddad and I were going to tell you last year, but then he died so suddenly. And I... Don't you dare blame this on him. He didn't even like me. Now I know why. All those years trying to make him love me, wondering what I'd done that was so bad. Ted found it very hard to cope with you, your condition. He was ashamed of me. He was afraid of losing you. It was easier not to get too close. I can't believe a word you say. He was ashamed of me, just like you. No! Then how come you couldn't even tell me yourself? Matt, I know this might all seem like too little, too late, but we're here to answer your questions now. We can arrange for you to have specialist counselling. What's the point? We don't talk about things in this family. We just keep secrets. I know we should have told you sooner, but... If there's anything I can do to make this better life... You don't get it, do you? There isn't a single thing you can do for me. Let him go. He's a lot to take. What if he never comes back? He will. Whatever he says, he's going to need you more than ever from now. You say that you've been using condoms. So there's very little chance that you can have caught the virus from Matt. Then I'm okay. Well, I really hope so, Debbie, but we won't know for about three months. Three months? Yeah, um, the first test won't be conclusive because there's a window period, so we'll need to do another test in three months to be sure. I don't understand. How can you not know? You'll have to talk to Matt about it. Look, do you know what I thought when I first saw you? I thought there are two lovely young people who really care about each other. Now, Matt needs your help and support at the moment, Debbie. And if you love him as much as you say you do, then you can help each other through this. And I promise you one thing, he is going to be every bit as scared and confused as you are. Deb, it's me. Call me back, please. I think it would help Matt for you to explain about his mother. I can't. You lied to him before. I did it for the best. We hurt him enough for one day. You can't go on hiding from this, Estelle. No, I won't. No more. He idolises his mum's memory. I can't take that away from him, too. Well, it's your decision, of course, but you have to consider the possibility that perhaps Matt is right. That you are ashamed of his condition. I love him. I would never doubt that. But don't confuse protecting him with protecting yourself. If you want to help Matt come to terms with the future, then you've got to make sure that it's his best interests that you have at heart. Well, I have to go. I'll see myself out. You okay? Dunno. 
depends if I've got AIDS or not. It's not AIDS, it's HIV. It still adds up to the same thing. I've had a test. It'll show one way or the other. I'm scared, Deb. Yep. So am I. I can't. It's like you're a totally different person. I'm still me. Nothing's the same. I can't explain it. Deb, you won't... You won't tell people at school, will you? You think I want anyone knowing? No, of course not. I'd better go. I'm sorry, Matt. Are you dumping me? Dunno. I'd have told you if I'd known. Nan lied to me. But I never lied about loving you, Deb. See you around. Have you seen Debbie? She don't want to know me. Oh, it's just a shock, love. I'm sure that when she thinks about... What them... happens when all my friends find out? Well, if they're really your friends, they'll understand. That's what I thought about Debbie. But who wants to know someone who's going to die, especially that? Stop it! I won't have you talking like that. You've got nothing to be ashamed of. Have I not? No. Nobody asked for this to happen to them. It's nobody's fault. I lied to you before about the blood transfusion. That wasn't how you got the virus. Cathy passed it on to you when she was pregnant. She didn't die of cancer? No. She didn't even know she had the virus till she found she was expecting you. I can't believe this. Then how did she get it? Was it from my dad? Or is this why he didn't want to know us? Love, your dad died before you were born. Your mum, she... She got mixed up in drugs. Seeing him overdose scared her half to death. It, it, it helped her get clean. Drugs? But you told me. A few of us are perfect, love. She was a good mother. As soon as she found she was pregnant, you were her entire world. Why couldn't you just tell me the whole truth? I am so sorry. <laughs> you, you need to read this. Cathy wrote it for you just before... wait to get home. I've had a horrible day. How are you feeling now, Vivian? Still as rough as me? I feel perfectly fine, thank you. And I doubt if anyone had as much to drink as you two. I wonder how Georgie's getting on. It's not going to be easy coming back to work next week. No, you can't blame her for keeping out of Nick's way today, though. Oof, I don't know I can show his face. Hey, come on, guys. We don't even know for sure that he's involved. She says that I shouldn't blame you. I shouldn't take things out on you. That you were left to deal with her mistakes. Well, I made mistakes too. I was ashamed, but I won't be anymore. There are other letters, but she wanted you to read that one first. She said it wouldn't change anything, but it might help you to understand. I'm so scared now. So am I, love. So am I. But we'll get through this one way or another. And from now on, no more secrets. What happens when I get ill? I will get sick eventually, won't I? I don't know, love, but if it happens, we'll deal with it. I promise you, I'll be here. 
I'll always be here. I'm not interested in what anyone thinks happened. It's between George and Ronnie. And Nick. I don't think that's any of our business, Melody. And I hope we show a bit more tact when George gets back. Well, I wouldn't blame her if she didn't come back after what happened with her. <laughs> you really can't help yourself, can you? You want to know what happened? Want to know? I can't tell you. Nick, you don't have to justify yourself to us. No, I think I do. Yes, it happened. Yes, it was a mistake. On George and I are trying to move on from it. And I really hope she can repair her marriage. But endless gossiping isn't going to help, is it? Neither is seeing you every day. Thank you, Vivian. You're probably right. But hey, we still got to work with each other. So what I suggest is we all go home and see if we can move on before next week. I'll wait for my taxi outside. Imagine your husband walking out the door one day thinking you might never see him again. I tried talking to her, but she's increasingly delusional. Charles? Listen, pet, I'm a police officer. I should be out there catching criminals not stuck in here for hours on end. How can I show her the body of someone she claims isn't her husband? Jimmy and Eva go for the first scan of their baby. Don't miss Doctors back Monday afternoon at 1.45 here on BBC One. <laughs>